In this video, I am going to explain how you can build the infamous X Ridge roof. I know since I don't know what to call it, I will call it the X Ridge roof. That sounds sounds like something that uh, would be in a video somewhere. So the first thing you're going to want to do is build a wall level at the top and locate it in the center of whatever you are building. Now. If you are going to, I mean, this wall can be any height, you know, you can, if you want it to be some type of a roof pitch like a 4 and 12 or a 5 and 12, then you'll have to do the math on that. And uh, to give you an idea here, this is a 20 foot by 20 foot garage. So we would, half of the span is 10 foot. If I wanted it to be a 4 and 12, I would simply multiply the number 4 by half of the span that would divide into 12. And I know that's confusing, but this is basically 10 foot. If I wanted it to be in four and 12, this wall would be 40 inches tall. And again, it's gonna to needs to be in the center. The center of the wall stud here you're going to be using will be in the center. And I'll leave the stud spacing up to you. You want to uh, make a little stronger. Two foot on center would probably be okay. In my example here, they're 32 inches on center and you might need uh, one brace or a couple of braces because you want this wall to be straight and of course uh, try to put the braces in where they will not be in the way of the rafters when you are framing them but again that they could always be moved later now to keep things simple i am going to nail a block onto the side or screw it onto the side and it could be about an inch inch and a half down and just simply set the rafter up there we're going to be using this so that we can just simply mark the bottom seat cut here. You can always use math for that. And the seat cut, and you can see it's up against the wall here, the seat cut can be the full length of the wall, but uh, I, I would have it, try not to have it any smaller than two inches here. So you can have it between two inches and whatever the thickness is of the wall. If it's a two by six wall, you might not want to go the full five and a half inches. Um, three and a half inches uh, would be uh, sufficient. Here's what it would look like after you marked it. And then uh, double check it by setting it in place to see if it fits. Now before you nail this one in place, this can be used as a pattern to cut the rest of the rafter. So simply use this one. Maybe I like to write the word pattern on it and then you can set it on top of the other boards and mark the seat cuts out and uh, so that you don't need to mark each one of the rafters. And of course you can see here how it's starting to come together. The rafters will lap at the top. And of course, these wrap, this rafter here will move over an inch and a half to so that it laps for this particular roof. And that's what it would look like at the top. Another view of it there. And I like to have this plate sticking out a little further um, than the wall here. So uh, you could, I would say 10 inches, something like that would be fine past the wall. Um, four inches would be fine also. Next step would be to install the rafters, all of the blocks. Just going to kind of whip through this here. Shaped blocks on the bottom. Regular ridge blocks at the top. And I don't know for sure if you would need to install the ridge blocks. I'm just putting them in there to give you an idea of what... Uh, what it would uh, you know I think it would be stronger to put these ridge blocks in but if you you can always put some other blocks over here on the sides and uh, you know you could even have some blocks over here I would imagine that would be fine also but uh, roll blocks down the center is just another method you can use the next step will be to mark the top of the rafter and you could have this go farther out. You could use longer rafters. Remember, this is just an example of something you can do. I would definitely get an engineer involved in something like this if you are not going to use any collar ties or rafter ties, I should say. 
Um, I think something like this would work fine with rafter ties, but as a cathedral ceiling, I'm not 100% sold on it. So mark the top, and I'm going to be starting from the point where the rafter, the bottom of the rafter, laps over the top of the other rafter, as you can see here. And then I would mark each end, you know, go to the other side, mark it like this, and then uh, get a chalk line and snap a nice straight line across this. You don't need to mark each one of them individually. Mark, um, get a line across the top of the rafters, and then you could always uh, use the level or a pattern to uh, mark the rest of them. It should look something like this when you are done cutting. And then you can install the board that will be the support board. And uh, you can always shape the bottom of it. I think it would be better to uh, shape the bottom of it and have it match the angle of the lower roof rafters. And uh, I'll leave it up to you if want, you want to shape the top of it, you can. Here's an idea of some nailing, toe nailing into the rafter with our support board and then into the in nailing into the other rafters. The next step would be to cut the upper fill rafters. And um, you could simply use a block or a couple of blocks. Now this angle here is going to be the same angle as this one here. So you could uh, simply mark a couple of scrap boards with your um, with your the pieces you cut off of here and who knows maybe the pieces you cut off of these rafters could be used for this for this uh, fill also so you just need to figure that with the rafters when you purchase them you could get them a little longer and then you could mark the center where the top connects then move the line back half the distance of the ridge you're going to be using. So for in our example, we're going to be using a one by eight ridge and that would need to move back three quarters of an inch. And then you could mark the other side, but this, this fill rafter should be the same as this one here. So you might not need to use this one. And again, you could always make this a pattern and mark the rest of them. But this gives you an idea what you're trying to accomplish. We'll go ahead and throw the ridge in. And that's what it would look like without all the rest of the fill rafters. And this one here, I did shape the bottom of it. You don't need to. I'll leave that up to you. This is designed to fit in between the rafters here. And um, the extension here on these boards needs, you can run it a little farther than you need to. If you don't know the length of your fascia board, you could always cut these off later. Um, but uh, if not, I like to cut these. I like to have a 12 inch overhang. If I subtract for my inch and a half fascia board, the distance from the face of the rafter or the face of the wall, for example, would be 10 and a half inches. This one here, of course, since this rafter is set back, it would need to be an inch and a half longer. Now with this method, you will need to add a two by four to the top here so that when you put your gable studs in, they will line up with it. And of course, you could always use uh, the same uh, board you're using for your rafters uh, if that's going to work out better for you. Again, the idea of this sticking out a little further past. This is just a block that I haven't removed that we used for our original layout to figure out the seat cut on the rafter. Give you an idea of what the what the fill boards would look like. They would just simply sit on top of each rafter and you could nail these into the other rafters and then in nail into these uh, boards that are on the side here. You can nail it into the ridge. You could put toenails in. You could do whatever you want to make it a little stronger without weakening the structure. Sometimes you put too many nails in, it splits the wood and you have defeated the purpose. 
I'm going to stop right there. I'm cutting the fascia board, um, installing it, the lookouts and stuff like that should be standard construction methods. But I do want to go over one more thing. I said that uh, you might not need to install these ridge blocks here. Well, you could always put blocks in here. Um, also, just kind of throwing that, throwing another thing in. If you block this, then you might not need to block this area here. So just kind of something to think about. So, but these blocks here are going to be two by four blocks and they are going to be used for the perimeter nailing on the plywood. So a lot of times an engineer is going to want to have perimeter nailing coming around the building on the roof sheathing. And we wouldn't have that if we didn't put blocks in. But if you position the blocks correctly, you'd be able to get the perimeter nailing here. And if you nailed it from the bottom with 16 D nails into this board here, you would basically have a transfer, which an engineer would love to see that uh, um, shear transfer on that. So that is it for this video. Hope it helps. And if it does, you know what to do with the old thumbs up button.